which meant that if you want to set up a profit and loss bank that's not an Islamic bank, you cannot do it. And it was a valid criticism. So we reissued the guidelines in June this year. We had a more general definition of non-interest banking, and I refer you to Appendix H. This is the guideline that we issued in June. In that guideline, if you go to the bottom of page three, we defined a non-interest financial institution as a bank or other financial institution under the purview of the Central Bank of Nigeria, which transacts business, engages in trading, investment, and commercial activities, as well as the provision of products and services in accordance with any established non-interest banking principles. Now, we then recognized that Islamic banks are one form of non-interest banks. They are non-interest banks that, in addition to not taking interest, don't do alcohol, don't do piggery, don't do gambling, don't do speculation. But if there are other people who want to set up a profit and loss bank that will lend to breweries, they can lend, it, lend to it. It's just not an Islamic bank. It's another form of non-interest bank. The second criticism was that the documents that were issued before kept mentioning the word Sharia. I think somebody said Sharia was mentioned 35 times in the document. And I felt Sharia is just an Arabic word. It's an English language document. Remove it and put Islamic commercial jurisprudence. And if there's a Sharia Advisory Council, because the Islamic Bank of Britain has a Sharia Advisory Council, every Islamic bank has a Sharia Advisory Council, but if it is a sensitive word, we called it Advisory Council of Experts. Now, I had a lot of flack from Muslims. I had somebody who came to me and said that I removed Sharia from the document, it's no longer Islamic banking, and I told him that in the entire Quran, Sharia is mentioned only once. So mentioning it 35, 35 times in a document or removing it has no bearing on whether it's Islamic banking. So we removed it. The third concern was that people did not understand, even though we kept saying it, people did not understand that these banks are non-faith biased. That these products are available to Muslims and Christians, and they are not restricted to Muslims. And in fact, I do know that in many countries, if you go to Malaysia, the majority of the people who <coughs> patronize Islamic banks tend to be even non-Muslims. They're the Chinese businessmen. Jais itself has at least 60 Christian shareholders. The second largest shareholder in Jais is a Christian from Igbo land. The point I'm making is, I mean, so we said, okay, look, if people, we cannot leave it to, to just assumption that this is non-discrimination. So if you go to the guidelines we issued on page 13, and these guidelines are on our website, you can just go to our website and print them. 16.2, discrimination on grounds of faith or ethnicity or any other grounds in the participation by individuals or institutions as promoters, shareholders, depositors, employees, customers, or other relevant parties in any transaction regarding a non-interest financial institution whether based on Islamic or other model is strictly prohibited. The central bank, by law, is obliged to issue guidelines for how they will operate. The way we issue guidelines for commercial banking and merchant banking and mortgage banking and microfinance banking 
and discount houses, we cannot license an institution without issuing guidelines. The central bank is not setting up an Islamic bank. The central bank is not advertising Islamic banking, which is why we have been accused of not communicating enough. But I have told communications people that we must make a distinction between explaining our role as a regulator and being a marketer for a product. It is for Jais to talk about the benefits of Islamic banking. It's not for the central bank. We can talk about it for financial inclusion or, and so on, but it is for the promoters of the bank to advertise their product. While the central bank has been regulating Islamic banking, I don't know if the House is aware that the Securities and Exchange Commission in January this year had issued guidelines for Islamic funds and that, in fact, you have Lotus Capital, which is an Islamic fund, and you have ARM and Standard Bank that have set up funds in line with the set guidelines on Islamic funds. I also don't know if members are aware that the NDIC has issued guidelines to the market for Islamic insurance, for deposits. I also don't know if members are aware that at least three insurance companies in Nigeria for almost 10 years have been offering Islamic insurance or takafu. African Alliance has been offering, Cornerstone and another. I don't know if we are aware that the federal government of Nigeria under General Obasanjo actually increased our membership of Islamic Development Bank to full member and that the Minister of Finance is, has a representative as an executive director in the Islamic Development Bank. And out of the 10, out of the 10 biggest companies that have borrowed from the Islamic Development Bank since its inception, only one is owned by a Muslim. Nine, I have a list of the Nigerian companies that have brought the Islamic Development Bank. Only one is a Muslim out of the top 10. The only state that has borrowed from the Islamic Development Bank, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, is Anambra State. <laughs> I know we laugh about this, but it is something that as Nigerians we have to learn. I mean, Anambra State just saw that this is a product, looked at the benefit, and went and applied. And they're benefiting from it. The misrepresentations have been so many. You know, people talk about me having studied Islamic law. They don't talk about the fact that at the age of eight, my parents took me to a boarding Catholic school and that I went to St. Anne's in Kaduna. And every day I said, Our Father and Hail Mary. They don't, they don't talk about the fact that when I went to King's College, I had the choice of taking Islamic religious knowledge and Bible knowledge. I studied Bible knowledge and got a distinction. And you can ask my mates in Casey. I have never known anything called tribalism. I have seen a very senior Christian cleric in a church accuse me of removing Christians from decision-making positions in the central bank. I became governor in 2009. The term of the board of directors of the central bank expired. I recommended a board for reappointment to President Er Adwa. On the board of the central bank, we have 11 members, only three are Muslim. The monetary policy committee of the central bank was not constituted when I became governor. The Committee of Governors took the decisions. I constituted it. I recommended seven external members of the MPC. Only one is a Muslim. A deputy governor's seat became open when I was governor. Dr. Kingsley Mogalu was in Geneva. I went, convinced him to come back to Nigeria, 
and convinced the president to appoint him. On our five member COG, only three, three are Christians, two are Muslims. We have 24 departmental directors in the central bank that I appointed. Only eight are Muslim. I never even thought of counting religion until I read that sermon. It was never a consideration. And these are the people who take these decisions. The director of financial policy and regulation who signed the guidelines and issued the guidelines and developed the guidelines, his name is Christian Chuku. The government of Japan is raising money through Islamic Sukuk. The government of the United States has raised money through Islamic Sukuk. At a time when the capital markets have dried up, the government of Malaysia two weeks ago issued a Sukuk trying to raise $2 billion. In six days, they had $9 billion because there's so much money in the Middle East going into those products. The ICRC in Nigeria is working with the central bank and the DMO to develop products. We want to advise the finance minister to go and tap into those markets in Asia and bring in four or five billion dollars to finance infrastructure in the country. So in terms of being a financial product that opens up the economy, good for financial inclusion, for diversifying funding base, that is a discussion we should be having. It's not about Islamization. The central bank is not a religious institution. It's a Nigerian institution. And you've seen Governor Charles Soludo was a Christian and a Catholic. But he did more to promote and establish guidelines for regulating Islamic banking than any governor before him. And all I'm doing is completing the work. Now I think as leaders, we need on the one hand to be very sensitive to people, which means we need to explain as much as possible and clarify the position, and I will continue to explain. I will continue to clarify. But we cannot continue to apologize for doing our work. And we cannot continue with this conversation at that level. We've got to continue raising it to a higher level, because we want to get to a point where Nigerians are now saying, is it good for Nigeria or bad for Nigeria? Forget the sentiment. So I thought I would explain this. The law is there from 1991. The process had been ongoing before I became governor. We have tried to put finishing touches to it. And for all we are concerned as central bank, we are simply carrying out our responsibility of making sure that people do not open up a bank and take people's deposits and then have those deposits go down the drain. We have to regulate and license and supervise the institution. I do hope that I have addressed many of the issues, including some that have been tangential to it. Um, I do hope because I have the highest, like I said, I went to a Catholic school. The reason I have not come out to reply to bishops or to reply to cans is because I have to continue respecting religious authorities. I have indicated to them privately I am willing to meet any of them. I have actually asked to be invited to the Catholic Bishops' Council in July. I'm willing to go to Cannes. I'm willing to go to any church. I'm willing to go to explain to anyone who wants to understand what we are doing and why we are doing. But I don't want this to be a religious conversation. I don't want it to be an emotional conversation. I want to be a discussion about finance, about economics, about regulation, about financial inclusion, because I'm the governor of a central bank. I'm not on a pulpit.